We'll begin our meeting tonight, folks, by singing the opening psalm, Psalm 1. And, of course, the words will be on the screen above us here. Page 5, for those who prefer the hymn book, Psalm number 1, that man hath perfect blessedness, who walketh not astray. The Academy, of course, teaches the Word of God in teaches church history and other subjects. And, of course, here in this psalm, we have the blessing of yielding our lives to the Word of God, the blessed man, the happy man. So we'll stand, please, as we worship the Lord and sing all of this psalm together. I'm glad I can see you now, the Reverend Gray. Uh, I was wondering, would I have to stand on the shoulders of giants tonight to lead the meeting? And the giant being the Reverend Gray. So I'm glad he's able to move this down um, for us. And to that end, we're going to ask the Reverend Gray if he'll come now and open in prayer. Obviously, he's the minister of the congregation here. And the church in Tandragee have hosted the academy as it's recommenced this year. So only fitting that we have their minister to lead us to the throne of grace in prayer. And we'll ask him to do that just now. Thank you. Let's all bow in a wee word of prayer and ask the Lord for his help as we come into his presence this evening. Our Father in heaven, we do thank thee and praise thee for this way of access that we have before thy throne of grace. We thank thee, Lord, we can come into thy presence in the name of the Lord Jesus, pleading the merits of his precious blood. And, O oh God, as we approach thy throne of grace tonight, we do thank thee, Lord, for the occasion while we're here this evening. We pray, Lord, for a real sense of thy presence. We thank thee, Lord, that we're even two or three are gathered together in thy name. There thou art in the midst, and not to bless. We do pray, Lord, that you would come and bless us this night through thy precious word. We thank thee, Lord, and we praise thee that it's the entrance of thy word that giveth light. And, O God, especially for your servant, 
Lord, that he might know the infilling of God, the Holy Spirit, this evening as he opens up the Word of God. Lord, bless all the graduates. We thank thee, Lord, for the lectures over these past months, for those, Lord, who have come along to study thy Word. And we pray, Lord, as they graduate tonight, that they would know the blessing of God upon them. What a privilege it is to study the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of truth. And we thank thee, Lord, for the precious Word of God. We believe it's infallible. We believe it's inspired. We believe that it's incorruptible. Oh God, we just praise thee tonight for the Scriptures of truth, which are able to make us wise unto salvation. We thank thee, Lord, for many tonight who can read their title clear to mansions in the sky. That day, Lord, in many of our lives when we heard the Word of God and when the Holy Spirit took the Word and applied it upon our hearts, convicting us of our sin and showing us our need of a Savior. And Lord, that night, that day, we came to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. We just thank Thee tonight for a so great salvation. And Lord, what a privilege it is to serve Thee we pray, Lord, in these days that you would even send us a breath of revival. We thank thee, Lord, for the work of the Bible College, and we pray, Lord, that you'll bless the principal, bless the lecturers. We pray, Lord, that you would undertake for the students, and, O oh God, that in these days you would, Lord, call many more young men and young women into the Bible College to train to serve thee. We thank thee and praise thee, Lord, for all thy mercies to us, Lord, in these days, bless us now. We just commit this service to thee. Bless your servant as he leads the meeting. We ask the Lord that you'll undertake for him and every one that will take part tonight. We just commit this service to thee. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Gray. We're going to have the reading of the scriptures now. And the reading will be brought by Mr. Noel Shields. And our brother Noel's been lecturing the students here in personal evangelism. Of course, he's an evangelist with our denomination. And his class has been very, very helpful and very practical indeed. So uh, Noel's going to come and read the scriptures for us. Thank you. Well, I'd like you to turn in God's Word to 1 Timothy and to chapter 4. And while you're turning to that, it's a great joy to be along tonight, this special occasion. And uh, well, I enjoyed the lectures when Mr. Patterson asked me. Uh, I was fearing trembling for a few days, and then I consented to do it. And uh, so I really enjoyed it, I have to say, and I hope you did as well. Now, we want to turn in God's Word to 1 Timothy and the chapter 4. It is only a, a short reading, a few verses. Uh, 1 Timothy and chapter 4, verse 12, we'll break into the reading. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thy an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Until I come, give attendance to reading to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And amen. May God bless the reading of his word to all of our hearts. Thank you. Thank you, Noel. Um, we're going to move to the graduation just now. And there are uh, three designations in terms of the uh, diploma or certificate that the individuals will be receiving tonight. So for 100% attendance, they will be receiving, an individual will be receiving distinction. If they miss two nights of the total of 14, then they will receive merit. And then if they miss three nights uh, or more, then they receive a pass. Uh, there were 33 who enrolled in the course this year. 
And of the 33, 15 got distinctions. In other words, they didn't miss a night. Uh, there were 12 who received merits. That means they simply missed one or two nights. And then the rest, they uh, received, there were six who received um, passes. And we just want to commend and congratulate all of the individuals. They have given themselves wholeheartedly. I believe they've enjoyed the, the lectures. They've been enthusiastic in their engagement. And we trust that it's been a blessing um, to them. Before we move to the graduation, there are a few lecturers who have lectured throughout the two terms. Just want to send uh, their apologies. They couldn't be here tonight. The Reverend David Park, who lectures Christian doctrine. The Reverend Garth Wilson, who lectures in Bible interpretation. And the Reverend Ryan McKee, who lectures in children's work. They are otherwise um, engaged. And I also want to, uh, just at this stage, before we, we have the graduation, as I've said, thank the church here again and thank everybody who played an active role in just making the academy that we believe it was a success There's a lot of work goes on in the background in terms of making it happen and making it go and that obviously needs the people here the good folk here in tandragee those who set up the hall and we had a little bite of supper every night just in between uh, the, the lectures just to give a little breather a little time of fellowship and opening up, closing up, setting up le uh, lectures, that kind of thing, PowerPoint. And so we just want to put on record our sincere thanks to the committee session and minister here for all your endeavours in the gospel. We'll say a little bit more uh, about this upcoming term starting in October, but we'll move to the graduation now. And it's real joy to have Dr. Douglas to come and help with this. Uh, many decades ago, I'm not sure if I was on the earth or not, but many decades ago, uh, I'm told that this was an idea of Dr. Douglas and also the late Reverend Elliot, and they had a desire to see Christians go on with God and be educated and knowledgeable in things like doctrine, church history, and so it is real joy to have Dr. Douglas come and help out. He's lectured in the subject of Bible survey, very well able and capable, and so we're going to ask him to come and just help us out as we go through um, the graduation. Thank you, Dr. Douglas. Thank you. So these are roughly alphabetical order, very, very roughly, um, just as we could uh, put them. The students are laughing. Um, we do know we're ABCs, we, we can guarantee you that, but uh, we'll try and um, get through this. Uh, first of all, and uh, certainly not least, a good Bally McGurney man, um, that's where I'm the minister, uh, Brother Winston Allen and he received a distinction. So thank you, Winston. Lord. Oh, sorry, Dr. Douglas. Can I just interject a little comment and say, I'm delighted to be here this evening. It's a privilege to have a part in this very special occasion and uh, to have opportunity to present uh, these well-won certificates. And so Winston gives me great pleasure and say, we say, well done, indeed. Thank you. Okay. Next, Leslie Badger. Yes. Leslie Badger. Yes, Leslie. Well done. David Cahoon. David Cahoon. Well done. Sarah Davidson. Sarah, well done. Yes. Uh, Joy Con. Well done. Alice Bowden. Yes, well done. Next we have Hannah and Ruth Douglas, uh, fairly well known to Dr. Douglas. To say this is very special for me. <laughs> so, uh, a grand occasion, and well <laughs> done to you. Thanks, Ruth. Ruth. Uh, and Hannah, you come first here you go, Ruth. in this one. Thank you. Andrew Lockhart. Andrew. Gillian Gamble. Well 
Keith Farrell. Peter Johnson, is Peter here? Peter's not here, that's not okay. Here. Hazel McCracken. Yeah. Bethany Edwards. Natalie Hodgen. Uh, Leah Middleton. Well done. Thank you. Jared Morrison. Jared, well done. Good to see you. And next we have a, a couple, John and Rachel McNeil. It's Rachel's, it's John. Yes. <laughs> Caroline Miller. Nathaniel Porter. Michael Pratt. <laughs> Sam McKay. Angus McElroy. Uh, William Reid. Yeah. Ivan Houston. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wesley Ramsey. <laughs> George Walker. Yes, thank you. George, good to see you. Brings back memories. <laughs> Paul Wilson. Alex. Paul, oh, good pleasure presenting this to you. Thank you so much. Good night. <laughs> And then Naomi Soden, and Naomi can take Daniels as well. Naomi. Well, Naomi. Well done. There's Daniels as well. Thank you. Oh, yes. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Douglas. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, folks, maybe just a round of applause, I think, will be in order. Is there one missed out? Alex. Sorry, Alex. <laughs> You're I'm very sorry, Alex. I've, I've left it up here. Dear me. Uh, Swatches weren't coming tonight, Alex. Paul, my apologies. <laughs> Alex and Paul. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Alex, sorry about that. Take one from mom as well. Yeah, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. I was keeping the steps up. I was keeping the steps up. Yeah. 
One of the things that was a real pleasure to see this year was um, the young people coming on board with the Academy, and that was certainly an encouragement. Um, another encouragement was uh, that there were, I think, two couples that started off engaged, and by the time that they ended up coming to the course, they were married, and it didn't put them off. Uh, the knot is still tied very, very tightly, so um, it is lovely, lovely to see everybody and to see the zeal and the enthusiasm for uh, learning and the studying of the scriptures. Uh, the, co the course has been relaunched really after a number of years uh, after COVID, a little lapse there, a lull, and the course was relaunched here in Tandragee and will continue then. And so in October time, there will be a new term commencing and the brethren up in uh, Clocker Valley have kindly consented to host us this year. And so it will be exactly the same material and it will be sort of the same sort of format as well. So from October to December, there'll be seven nights and two lectures each night. And then January to March will be then another term. Just to let you know the subjects that are covered or will be covered in Clocker Valley. Uh, so Bible survey, and that is covered by Dr. Douglas and the Reverend Thomas Martin. Christian doctrine, which is covered by uh, the Reverend David Park, children's work. The Reverend Ryan McKee, personal evangelism. Mr. Noel Shields, Bible Interpretation, the Reverend Garth Wilson, and then Church History, the Reverend Thomas uh, Murray. And we'll be getting application forms out about May or June time, so keep an, an eye out for them. And if you have any questions about the course, well, there's 30-odd uh, people here. We'll be glad to fill you in on the benefits and the blessing of the course. And Clocker Valley's not too far away. Uh, we'll be going up the north coast the year after, and then probably to county down the year after that so if you missed out this year and you're within an hour and a half drive to clocker valley then you'd certainly be made most welcome um, and do speak to either myself or any of the lectures um, if you would like to at the close of the service just about the uh, the course itself before the reverend nelson comes and brings to us the word of god we're going to sing again together and it's the hymn 555 hymn 555 and of course, the, the main thrust of this course, really, the Christian Workers Training Academy, is to take us forward with the Lord. And so we're going to stand to sing a well-known hymn, uh, Onward Still Tis Jehovah's Will.
I also want to thank publicly tonight uh, our sister Linda, Linda Bell. Linda obviously has been the secretary in the college for a number of years and she's helped with um, all of the preparing of the notes and that kind of thing. And so we want to thank our sister Linda as well for all of her help and work this year. The academy is uh, ultimately a ministry of our Bible college. And so we thought it very appropriate to have the college principal to speak to us tonight. And so it is a real joy to have the Reverend Timothy Nelson to come and bring to us now the Word of God. Thank you. And could I ask you to turn to the portion that was read for us just a short time ago from Paul's first letter uh, to Timothy. We <clears throat> begin by thanking uh, Mr. Patterson for his invitation to come along tonight and also for his words of welcome. I want to pass on my own uh, congratulations to all of those who have received uh, their diplomas tonight. Uh, we commend you for your diligence and your commitment to the course over these past weeks and months, and we trust and pray that it will have been of benefit to you. I would want to echo Mr. Patterson's words of appreciation to all who have made uh, this possible over the past year. Uh, thank you very much for your service, your faithfulness, and your commitment. And it is a commitment, and we appreciate very much those who have given themselves to it. It would be remiss of me not to express particular appreciation to Mr. Patterson himself, uh, who was rather landed in this position with not a terribly long time to prepare, but he responded to the challenge very well, and uh, we are certainly thankful for his enthusiasm and his dedication and his organization as well. Uh, listening to him outlining what is proposed for successive years and thinking to myself, well, he's really on the ball and uh, he's not uh, allowing the grass to grow under his feet. But we appreciate very much all that he has done by way of direction over this past year. As we come to God's Word this evening, perhaps we could have a moment's prayer just now. Our God and Father, we return Thee thanks for the privilege and the opportunity to come together before Thee just now. We thank Thee for this meeting, for the occasion of our being here tonight, and for the opportunity to recognize those who have given themselves to the study of the Word. Thank Thee for the faithfulness of Thy servants who have been charged with delivering the various lectures. We thank Thee for their time of preparation, for their wisdom, and for the grace given to them. Thank Thee for those who have attended faithfully and who have now reached this point this evening. And we pray that what they have learned will live on with them and be an encouragement to them in the coming days. We pray that Thou will prosper the work of the Training Academy into the future and grant Thy blessing upon Thy servant and all who stand with him in this venture. Help us now, Lord, as we come briefly to Thy Word tonight. Be an encouragement to us. Give the help of the Holy Spirit. Speak to me and speak through me. Use me according to Thy will. We ask it in the Savior's name. Amen. There are parts of Scripture that do not lend themselves to a sense that is readily and completely agreed by all the commentators. Indeed, we might say there are many portions of this sort and to some degree, we have an example before us this evening. Paul encourages Timothy to attend to the duty of reading the Scriptures. If you will notice near to the beginning of the portion, 
The verse 13 contains the exhortation, till I come, give attendance to reading. But is this the public or private reading of the Word of God? Many argue for the former. Timothy, they remind us, was a minister of Christ. And the context indicates that Paul was counseling him concerning his responsibilities in that area. Indeed, very much of the letter has to do with the regulation of the local church, Timothy's duty to give leadership, and to proclaim the whole counsel of God. Thus, the exhortation can only refer to his public ministry, where the Word is to be read, of course, in the hearing of the people. That is one view. However, there is another approach. While allowing that the Greek word used here may identify public reading, it is shown that it may also describe a private reading of the Scriptures. This being so, Paul is directing Timothy to be careful about his own personal study of God's Word. After all, he will not be a good minister. He will not be a faithful minister, able to pass on the truth of Scripture if he is not well grounded in it himself, first of all. I have a certain sympathy with this view. I feel sure that within the context of the whole passage, the two things are in the mind of the apostle. Timothy's role as a preacher, and his need to prepare himself for the duties of that solemn office. You think about those words near to the end of the chapter, the final verse. Paul says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. It's about himself. It's about Timothy the man. And it's also about the ministry he has been charged to exercise. There is a twofold responsibility. And so, if there is good advice for one believer in these verses, there is surely good advice for us all. We may certainly be instructed and challenged once again in relation to our study of the Scriptures. I know that that is what you have been giving yourself to over these past weeks and months. And I think there's an encouragement to go on, to give yourself to this work into the future. Indeed, we might say to redouble your efforts as you reflect upon this matter. And so I want to just look at these verses tonight and to highlight a number of things that we find in the direction given by the apostle to his son in the faith. First of all, then, I want to mention what I will call purposeful attention. Purposeful attention. We've noted already the words in the verse 13, till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Give attendance to reading. Now, the term that is used in the original here means to pay heed, to apply the mind to something. In this case, the reading of the Word. We might think about the kind of response to this duty that will surely not meet the requirements which Paul has in mind. You see, there are any number of ways in which we can fail in this area. Uh, we might say that there is, of course, immediately the absolute failure to engage with the Word of God. Experience has confirmed that there are those, and I'm speaking at this point of professing Christians, there are those for whom the Bible is virtually a closed book 
from one Lord's Day to the next? Is it possible, my friends, even that your copy of the Scriptures lies in the car from one Lord's Day to the next? We have seen that happen. That cannot be right. That is not paying attention to the Word. That is abject failure. Then we might say, of course, there are some and they fall short because they are fitful readers. Their engagement with the Word of God is a thing of fits and starts. For a time, they are full of enthusiasm. They are engaged, committed. But then the exercise is left aside altogether. There's an inconsistency evident. And that, sadly, is one of the characteristic traits of modern Christianity. We see it in respect of this matter. We see it across the board in relation to many aspects of Christian life and experience. Those who appear to be going on well, And by and by we see them no more. This too is a missing of the mark. Others are forgetful readers. By this I mean to say they do not forget to read, but they forget what they have read. Indeed, if the same degree of forgetfulness were manifested in other areas of life, these folk would be in serious difficulties. However, that mind that refuses to retain Scripture is remarkably adept at holding on to all manner of trivial detail from a whole host of other sources. You engage with folk and they appear to have all of these things at their fingertips. But there is no remembrance of the Word of God. No remembrance of what they heard preached on the Lord's day past. No remembrance, perhaps, of what they read in their devotions this morning or yesterday. There's a very vivid picture given to us in the epistle of James, the little book of James, the opening chapter of that book, James chapter 1, and if we break in to read there just a few verses at verse 22, James 1, 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only deceiving your own selves. For if any be a a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, that is, in a mirror. For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, This man shall be blessed in his deed. You see, this is the kind of engagement with the Word of God that really counts. This shows to us the kind of reading that meets the standard. It's a a reading that is not just a hearing, but a doing. It's not as if we come along and we fix our eyes upon the mirror. Sometimes we do that and we may not like to see what is looking back at us. But if we're able to walk away from the mirror and within a moment or two we have forgotten what we saw, we would like to do that. But if we do it, see how ridiculous this is. This is the point that is made. Forgetful readers. Still others fail to pay attention because they flit around in their reading. When they come to the Word, it's like a kind of aimless wandering. There's no plan. There's no goal. 
There's no destination in mind. It's like the individual who sets out in the car and you ask him where he's headed, and he's not really sure. And off he goes down one road, and then when the notion takes him, he decides he's going to go up another road, and he follows that for a little time, and then maybe he turns back and finds another way. He's not really headed anywhere. And it's possible that that is how some engage with God's Word. A few verses here, a few verses there, almost where the Bible falls open. But that is not attentive, purposeful reading. By implication, our reading, if it is to meet the standard, should be consistent. It should be careful enough to ensure that we retain and respond to what we read. It should be with a clear goal in mind. Seeking to retain the knowledge we have gleaned and to make progress in our understanding of the Word. So, there is to be purposeful attention here. Give attendance to reading. Notice, to exhortation and to doctrine. We may say those terms have a particular application to the preacher. There's a sense in which that is true. The preacher is to give attention to exhortation and to doctrine. Doctrine is simply the word which means teaching. Very often in this age, people are afraid of the word doctrine. The word doctrine simply means teaching. Give attention to exhortation, to teaching. And what is true of the preacher is true of every Bible reader. We come to engage with God's Word. We need to pay attention to the teaching of Scripture and to those places where the teaching is applied to our hearts, where there is clear, definite exhortation. Purposeful attention. But then look at it again, if you will, tonight, and I want you to see here there is profound meditation. Profound meditation. Verse 15 says, meditate upon these things. Timothy is to meditate upon the fact that he is called to occupy a holy office, and also upon those truths that are calculated to fit him for that office. Now, I know that the word meditate has unfortunate connotations today. You talk to people about meditation in any kind of religious context, and almost inevitably they will associate it with some mystical Eastern religion, the kind of thing we should be steering clear of. But I emphasize to you tonight that this is a biblical word. This is a biblical word. It's a word that is often related to the study of God's Word, because it's not just about reading. It's not just about allowing our eye to scan across the page. It's about meditation. You take the book of Psalms. You'll find over and over again there is reference made to this very thing. I was struck by the fact that we sung from the opening psalm at the outset of the meeting this evening, and of course in the wonderful description that is given of the man of God in that very first psalm, you will see some of the characteristics of the godly man. He's a man who stands apart, a man who's not walking in the counsel of the ungodly. He's not standing in the way of sinners. He's not sitting in the seat of the scornful. He's stepping aside from all of these things. But he's also a man who gives himself to the study of the Word. His delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. I'm asking you, dear friend, in the meeting tonight, do you know what it is to meditate in the Word of God? Give yourself to the most earnest consideration of those things which you see on the page in front of you. 
And we were to turn over a little way in the book of Psalms, you'd find uh, another Psalm, the 77th Psalm, which in many respects is, uh, I suppose, a primer on the whole subject of meditation, because that's what the psalmist is doing here in the course of this psalm. There's a verse that jumps out, I think, as we ponder this matter. It's the verse 6, the Psalm 77, verse 6. He says, I call to remembrance my song in the night. I commune with mine own heart, and my spirit made diligent search. There are three things there. I call to remembrance my song in the night. So he's He's engaging in the exercise of remembrance, or if you want to say memorization. Memorization. And there's also reference here to communion. I commune with mine own heart. And then there is the thought of investigation. My spirit made diligent search. Now, I suggest that these three activities may be related to our treatment of Scripture. This is one way in which we will really begin to meditate upon those things that are given to us in the Word of God. There's a place for memorization. I know that's out of fashion very much in these times, but there's a place for the memorization of Scripture. There's most certainly a place for communion with the Word of God because it is, of course, as we commune with the Word of God that we learn more and more what it is to commune with the living Word, even Christ. You cannot commune with Christ if you have no time for communion with the written Word. It's there you find Christ. Sometimes we hear people talk about their relationship with Christ and how they feel close to Christ and how they Uh, They follow Christ in this way or that way. And as you continue to converse with them, you discover that they have very little appetite for the study of the Word of God. And so while on the one hand they're saying, I follow Christ, I'm a disciple of Christ, I do this, I do that, you discover very readily that they do no such thing because they are not in the Word. They don't really know Christ. And of course, it's only as we investigate what is there before us that we will advance in our knowledge of these most important and impressive things. So we need to call the Scriptures to mind. We need to commune with those truths that are given so that they might speak to us. And of course, we need to investigate more and more stretching ourselves as we come to the Word of God over and over again, chewing over, if you like, what is written and recorded for our nourishment. Profound meditation. Personal dedication is required. Personal dedication. Look at what is here again in the words of this Fifteenth verse, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them. Give thyself wholly to them. That literally reads, be in them. Be in them. Get really involved. Give yourself to this task. Dedicate yourself to it. Now we've all put our hands to various enterprises, and at the end... We have had the feeling that we have done our best. We have given everything we possibly could give. Maybe you're here at the end of this course. You've come right to the end. You've come to this point this evening. And as you look back, you can say, well, I gave it my best. I attended all of the sittings, or at most of them, as as far as I could possibly be there, I was there. I gave it my best. We search our hearts this evening, or have the Lord search our hearts. Can we honestly say that we've always given ourselves wholeheartedly with dedication to the task of engaging with the Word of God? 
isn't it closer rather to acknowledge that very often the time we give to the study of Scripture and the energy and the focus is just what is left. What is left over, if you like, after a hundred and one other things have been attended to. Is it possible that we come to the study of God's Word and we're so tired that what we're doing can't really be described as study at all and it's just about getting it done, ticking the box so that we can move on. Listen, my friend, in the meeting tonight, this is the Word of the living God. It deserves better. It deserves personal dedication, the personal dedication of every one of us. And of course, there's practical application here. We refer to the final verse. Already it says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Take heed unto thyself. Never fall into the trap of treating the study of Scripture as a mere exercise in academics. That's what happens in some Bible colleges today. It's all about academics. It's all about this course or that course. It's all about obtaining this qualification or that qualification. Being able to say you have sat this examination and succeeded in that examination. It's all about the letters you were able to put at the end of your name when you were finished. May God preserve our college from ever going down that road. And may God preserve us from ever engaging with the Scriptures in that way. This is a book that speaks. We need to be ready to listen. We need to be willing to open our ears for what the Lord is saying to us. That's essentially what the apostle is saying. Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Got to listen. Got to have these things applied to your life and to your experience. You've got to have ears for the hard things. Because not everything that the Lord says to you will be welcome. Just like it was when the Lord Jesus Christ walked this earth. There were many occasions when he spoke to individuals and to multitudes, and what he said was not welcome. And the Lord is still speaking to his people in and through his written word. And I'm saying to you, there are times when he says things to us that we would rather not hear. But we have got to have an ear for those things, for the reproof, for the correction, for the instruction in righteousness, the things of which Paul speaks when he writes to Timothy again in his second letter. You've got to apply this to yourself first of all. Take heed unto thyself. And then there must be, of course, persistent continuation. Persistent continuation. Verse 16, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this thou shalt both see of thyself and them that hear thee. Don't just make a good start. You know, it may be uh, that that's exactly what this has been for some of you in respect of the course that you have undertaken this last year. It's been a good start. But don't stop there. Don't stop there. 
I mean, I'm speaking to some here this evening who have set this course, and it may be the purpose of the Lord that you're to go forward from this point. I might be speaking to some here tonight who will be in the future part of the Whitfield College. Maybe you'll be studying there in the future. Maybe the Lord has that purpose for you. Maybe not. But don't stop where you are tonight. It's a good start. Just continue on. Continue on. Continue in them, he said. Consistency is sometimes undervalued. But how vital it is as far as every aspect of the work of God is concerned, and it's certainly no less valuable when it comes to the study of Scripture. Got to keep all of this. Keep on. We can be buoyed by the promise that such faithfulness will be attended by impressive results. Isn't that what the verse says? Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. And you could even set the verse 15 alongside that. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. You see, there are impressive results here. There is the fact that people will see a difference in you. You give yourself to the study of Scriptures, you are in the Scriptures, you continuing this, people will see a difference in your life because such an engagement with the Word of God will make you a different person. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. You give yourself to the study of Scriptures and to the living out of what the Lord is pleased to reveal to you. That will change you. That will impact your life in a positive way. Because more and more you will be conformed to the likeness of Christ. Where there is a child of God who is being conformed more and more to Christ, and that will be seen. That will be seen. People will themselves be influenced towards the right. In doing this, verse 16, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. This is, of course, a particular application to Timothy in his ministry. If he immerses himself in the Word of God, and that flows out in his preaching ministry, then, of course, there will be positive results for those who sit under that ministry. But I venture to say we can apply this across the board. Because if you too, dear believer, are immersed in the Word of God, that cannot but have a positive influence on people around you. You don't necessarily have to say anything because your life will tell a tale. So I trust tonight that the Lord will enable us all to give attendance to reading, that He will make us better readers of the Word, and that what you have experienced over these past weeks and months will be an incentive for you to press on and to prove the blessing that is to be found in such an engagement with the living Word of God. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord encourage you, every one. I want to thank the Reverend Nelson for that timely message this evening.
We're going to close our service tonight by singing the words of hymn 406. Hymn 406, more about Jesus would I know and more of his grace to others show. And after the singing of this hymn, we'll just ask you to stand please as we close our time out in prayer. 406, stand please to sing. Let's stand, please. It's a real joy to have the Reverend Thomas Murray, who is a lecturer in church history in the academy with us tonight, and he's going to close in prayer just as he's making his way uh, up to the pulpit. Uh, there is supper for everybody, and we just direct you through these doors and through the channel, and then you can go to the hall, and there's plenty of supper for everyone. Um, other than the students, we just ask the students to wait behind for a few moments just for a picture or two, and then they can go, um, but the rest of you, you can make your way just immediately after the service. Reverend Thomas Murray, to close in prayer, please. Let us just bow together in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank Thee for Thy presence with us here this evening. We thank Thee also for Thy word to our hearts. And we cry to Thee that Thou would help us not only to be hearers, but Lord, help us to be doers of Thy precious word. We ask that Thou would enable us, even like the psalmist, to meditate upon thy word, not only in the day, but also in the night seasons. And we pray, Lord, that thou wouldst help us to live out thy word, even in our daily lives. We thank thee this evening for those who have graduated, 
We thank Thee for the things that they have heard over the last number of months. And we ask, Lord, that Thou be pleased to use that even for the strengthening of their faith and for the encouragement even of their own souls. We thank Thee that Thou hast reminded us in Thy Word that those that know their God shall be strong and shall do exploits even for Thee. And Lord, we ask that Thou wouldst uh, enable each of those who have graduated not only to know about Thee, but to know Thee. And Lord, that even going from this meeting and going back to their homes and back to their own churches, that Thou wouldst enable them to do great exploits for Thee. So we pray that Thou wouldst be with them and encourage them and bless them. We thank Thee for those who have given time even to lecture. We remember especially the Reverend Patterson. We think of how even tonight his mind will be turning to next year. We pray that Thou wouldst guide him and Lord bless him for his labors in the gospel and in the word of God for Thee. We thank Thee for the good things that have been provided. We ask, Lord, that Thou wouldst bless them to our bodies, bless the hands that have prepared it, and we ask that Thou wouldst then take us to our homes rejoicing in Thy so great salvation. For we ask these things, Lord, in Thy name and for Thy glory. Amen. Amen.